Good morning, Fantastic Fours. Welcome back to another morning. I trust that you had a good night's sleep, that you're all well and safe and at home and looking after your parents and making sure you're not irritating them. Welcome back to another lesson of maths. Uh, let's jump straight in. So just a reminder, if you have any questions, email grade four at worksheetcloud.com. Uh, I hope that you are remembering to practice your times tables just to make sure that things are going well. So a reminder, if you have forgotten, first off, you need to make sure that you've learned your times table correctly. Once you've learned it correctly, you need to time yourself and then practice, 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 time yourself again and see how quick you can get with each one of your times tables. The more you practice, the better you get. If you'd like me to do one of my times tables, I've still got them from when I was at school up to my 13 times table. You're welcome to send me an email and, and challenge me to see. Let me know what you got as your fastest time. And if you'd like to see if I can beat it, we'll see. I do know I have had children in my class before who were so good that they were definitely quicker than me. So maybe that's your challenge. See if you can get quicker than me at your times tables. After the lesson, you can click on the link above the video and get the worksheet for today that will check whether you've mastered what it is that we did in class today. So today, fractions five, our fifth lesson with fractions, we're looking at subtracting fractions. I'm never entirely sure whether we should include this as a whole lesson um, because it's pretty much the same as adding fractions. If you add fractions, you can subtract fractions in the same way. Let's just go back to the previous slide. So recap of the important rules that we learned with addition, because we're going to use those again today. The denominators have to be the same before we can add. We use equivalent fractions to make them the same. Also, when we add, we don't add the denominators. The denominator stays the same. We looked at that in the last lesson. If you can't remember why that is, or if you're struggling with that, go back to the previous lesson and just watch where I drew to show you why the denominator stays the same. Goals for this lesson, to reinforce addition of fractions and also to learn subtraction of fractions. Let's look at last lesson's homework. Uh, there's, this is revision of addition of fractions. It's useful because it'll help us. We use the exact same process with subtraction. Jumping across to our whiteboard. Here's our homework. I'm going to look down quickly so I can write on the screen. Our first question was one third plus one third. Our denominators are already the same, so it stays as a three. Our numerators, we add one plus one is two, and there's our answer. Nice and simple. Uh, the rules are up at the top of the worksheet, just in case you couldn't remember them. So the rules were, first up, we must make sure our denominators are the same. If they're not the same, we make them the same. And once we've done that, we add them. But number two, we don't add the denominators. Looking at number two, our denominators are already the same. So we don't have to add those again. Denominator stays as four. One plus two is three. There we go, there's our answer. Next one, C, our denominators are already the same. So we don't need to change them. Denominator stays the same. 3 plus 4 is 7. 7 over 8. D, the last one where I gave you the denominators being the same as well. Denominator stays 6. 3 plus, sorry, 2 plus 3 is 5. 5 over 6. There we go. So I gave you a little bit of a clue over here with the next ones. Uh, I gave you the space to fill in the equivalent fractions, and then you can get your answer. Later on, when we're giving you all of these mixed up together, you won't normally get it. Uh, so don't rely on the fact that your teacher will give you a space to do the equivalent fractions. 
So when we did the workings out in our lesson, I, we did them underneath, but for the sake of saving space, I did them next to. Doesn't matter which way you do it, that's entirely up to you. Or if your teacher has a specific way that they like it done, you should definitely follow that way. E. So I've got a 2 and a 4. I need to make my denominators the same before I do anything. I notice that I can do something to the 2 to get it to be a 4. I can times it by 2. I do the same to the top. It's a little bit small. I hope you can see it says times by 2. So I'm going to rewrite that fraction now. 1 times 2 is 2 on top. 2 times 2 is 4. I've now got it over 4. The other fraction I'm writing in black because it didn't change. It was 1 over 4 over here, and it's 1 over 4 over there. I'm just moving it across. It's not maths, it's just copying. Now that my denominators are the same, I can add them. There's my answer denominator. 2 plus 1 is 3, and there is my final answer. So a half plus a quarter is 3 quarters. The next one, I've got a 6 and a 3. I first need to make them the same before I add them. I notice that I can times the 3 by 2, and what I do to the bottom, I do to the top, and that will allow me to get the denominators to be the same. So 2 times 2 is 4, it's my new denominator. 3 times 2 is 6. Writing in black, just copying, not maths. I'm just rewriting. So this one, I just rewrite over there. I'm just adding it. It is important that when you move them across, you don't change the order. So this is the one that I put over here. This is the one that I put over there. They stay in the same order. So you can see always the order stays the same. That's particularly important when we come to minus. It won't actually make a difference when we're adding fractions, but when we subtract fractions, you'll get the wrong answer if you change them around and put them the wrong way. Okay, with f, now that we've got our denominators the same, we can add them. Our answer denominator is still 6. 1 plus 4 is 5, and our final answer is 5 sixths. In our next one, I notice I can do something to the 4 to make it into 8, because my denominators need to be the same. What I do to the bottom, I do to the top. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8 in black because I haven't changed it. There we go. Reminder, the order stays the same. We don't switch them around. There we go. Now that we have the denominators being the same, it's easy to add. 4 plus 1 is 5. Here's our answer. And the last one, I have to make my denominators the same before I add them. I notice I can do something to the 2 to make it into 6. It's easy for me to notice because my times tables are good. The more you practice, the better you get. 1 times 6 is 6. 2 times 6 is 12. I'm not going to... I'm going to use black for the other one because I haven't changed the fraction. I'm just rewriting it. First one goes first. Second one goes second. Now that I have got the same denominator, it's easy to add. 6 plus 1 is 7, and there's my final answer. I hope that you didn't have too much difficulty with that. But if you did, I would suggest you just go and practice again. Um, just remember those rules. You've got to make sure the denominators are the same before you add, and then you should be good. And just don't add the denominators when you do your answer. Subtraction of fractions, as I mentioned at the start of the lesson, is exactly the same as addition of fractions, except that you're minusing, but the rules are the same. Before you minus, before you subtract, the denominators have to be the same. If they're not, make them the same. Secondly, you don't, hmm, that should say subtract. You don't subtract the denominators. You don't add the denominators, you don't subtract the denominators. Because it is so similar to the addition of fractions. 
I am in fact going to do this as a challenge. We're going to go straight into you working them out with a pencil and paper. I'll give you a little bit of a head start and then I will work through it too. First one I'd like you to work out. 4 over 9 minus 1 over 9 equals. So I'm only going to give you about 30, 20 to 30 seconds to start with this one. And then I will go through it as well. Meantime, I'll put down the second one too. I think I've given you enough time to get through the first one. So let's go through the first one. Second rule, well, first rule, we check the denominators are the same. They're both nine, so that's good. We can go ahead with that. We know our answer denominator is also going to be a nine. Next, we simply look at the numerators. Four minus one is three. The most common mistake that I see in grade fours is when they accidentally add the four and the one and they get five over nine. And that's not a misunderstanding of fractions. That's just a lack of attention. So please be very careful to check what your sign is in the middle. Um, make sure that you're doing the right thing. And in fact, to practice that, your homework today has a combination of plus and minus together so that you get right into the habit of checking which one is which from the very beginning. Let's have a look at number two. Firstly, we check to see if our denominator is the same. Yes, they are. So we can go straight to putting our denominator in the answer. Next, six minus two is four. So our new numerator is four. Number three, this time, our denominators are not the same. So we can't add them until we've made them the same. What do you think you can do to make them the same? I hope that your times tables are good enough to notice that you could times that by two to make that a four, and then they would both be fours. And you remember that what you do to the bottom, you do to the top. That's very important with equivalent fractions. So making sure that we keep the order the same. So the first one was first, so I'm going to rewrite it. Not maths, just copying. And the second one, the one that has changed, one times two is two, two times two is four. We were doing subtraction. So that's this one over here, making sure the order is correct. Now our denominators are the same. Now we can do our subtraction. So denominator for the answer will still be four. Three minus two is one. There's our answer. Next question, I have another two questions for you. I hope that you're finding subtraction quite easy to master now that you've got addition. Three more, sorry, five over nine, five ninths. You can get into the practice of saying the fraction correctly. Five ninths minus one third. And I hope that as soon as I wrote that, you noticed that our denominators are different. And that the first thing we need to do is to make our denominators the same. So I will give you about, a, about 30 seconds to get going with this one before I go through 
the workings with you. Okay, so I noticed that I can do something to the 3 to make it into a 9. If I times it by 3, I get 9. What I do to the bottom, I do to the top, so I must times the top by 3 as well. In the same order that it was, so I'm just rewriting 5 over 9. Not maths, just copying. Minus 1 times 3 is 3. 3 times 3 is 9. Now my denominators are... Oh, sorry, let me just reinforce that. Stays in the same place. Now that my denominators are the same, I can do my subtraction. So denominator will stay the same. 5 minus 3 is 2. There's my answer. Number 5. 4 over 5. Minus 4 over 10. Give you a little while to get started. Before we subtract, we need to make sure that... That's right, the denominators are the same. So we're going to have to change one of those to be like the other. Hope you've had enough time to get going with that one or even finish it. I notice I can do something to my 5 to make it into a 10. Times it by 2. And what you do to the bottom, you do to the top. So the first fraction becomes... 8, 4 times 2 over 10, 5 times 2, minus, unchanged, it's just copying, staying in the same order. Now that I have the same denominators, I can do my subtraction. So 10 at the bottom, 8 minus 4 is 4. If you are really comfortable with your subtraction, then pay attention as I quickly show you a different way to work this one out. If you are just feeling like you're getting this, take a moment, stand up, stretch, and ignore me for the next 45 seconds. I'm going to rewrite this question underneath there, for those of you with me. I'm going to work it out a different way. Here's the difference. This time, instead of looking at this fraction here, I'm going to look at this one over here. And I notice that if I divide both of these by 2, I will get a number that has a 5 at the bottom, a denominator of 5. So the first one will stay the same. 4 over 5 minus, the second one is the one that changes. 2 over 5 equals 2 over 5. Now you might right now be saying, but that's a different answer. But if I draw the two, and I'm only going to draw one, you'll notice that actually it's the same thing. So let me start off by drawing in purple. If you are, if you are not quite with us, or if you just feel comfortable with uh, subtracting, then you're still stretching, you're not paying attention. So I'm drawing my fifths right now.
It's not perfect fits, but I think that will do for now, just to illustrate the point. So over here, I had one, two, three, four. I'm now going to, oh, I actually drew the wrong ones. It doesn't matter. So that one, what I drew in purple, I've done over there. Oh, let's now do it like this. So I'm going to color in two fifths. Now I'm going to use the red color to break these five, each of them, into a two. So that means I'm going to get 10 as my denominator. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There's the 10. 1, 2, 3, 4. There's my 4. So in fact, 4 tenths is the same as 2 fifths. Now I'm going to erase that. If you got it, that's fantastic. If not, that's fine. It's grade 5 work over there, so I wouldn't worry about it at all. I'm going to erase it entirely and go on to my next question. If you got it, excellent. If not, it's not something to stress about. Number six, the last one that we're going to practice together. A half minus an eighth. 20 seconds. Go for it. Step one, we need to make the denominators the same. I've noticed that if I times this one by four, it will become an eight. One times four is four. Two times four is eight. The other one is unchanged. I'm just moving him across. Now that my denominators are the same, I can subtract them. Denominator stays eight. Four minus three, one is three. There's my answer. Good. I think I have just enough time for the last thing I wanted to look at today. And that is two quick word problems. So the trick, and I think that word problems is, is possibly the most difficult part of, of maths for any section. And that's because we've hidden the maths inside the language. So we need to now, as mathematicians, take the maths out of the language and then work it out. So while we're reading through this together, and I've got a plus and a minus problem here, you don't know which is which, we're going to quickly go through them. So we're going to take the maths out. I'm going to put it on the whiteboard, and then we're going to go and have a look. So firstly, you and your younger sister, you might not have a sister, but we're just doing a word sum. You and your younger sister share a pizza. You eat three quarters of the pizza. Okay, that's important. That's a number. Three quarters. And she only eats an eighth. Oh, that should be an eighth. I think that was autocorrect. So that's another one, an eighth. And being one, so one eighth. And the question is, how much is left over? Hmm. That's a tough one. All right, I hope that we can manage that. And the next question, let's go through it as well. No, we'll, I think we'll come back to the next question. Let's go across to our whiteboard. So I've written down the important part. We have three quarters, which is how much you ate, and we have one eighth, which is how much your sister ate. And we want to work out how much, first of all, we ate all together, and then we can see what's left over. So when we want to see how much you ate together, we're going to add those. Our rule says we can't add ones that have different denominators, so we need to make them the same. So you ate six eighths, which is the same as three quarters. Your younger sister, obviously much younger and not very hungry, only ate one eighth. And so together you ate seven eighths of a pizza. So this word problem I probably have included, it's probably more of a grade five level. 
but I think that we can think about this a little bit and hopefully we'll be able to get the answers. So if we ate, let's draw our pizza. I'm going to draw a yellow pizza in the hope that it has lots of lots of cheese on it. I think we will have spinach on our pizza and have green shapes as well. I'm just being silly. All right, there's our pizza in eight pieces. Let's have you eating six eights. One, two, three, four, five, six. And your sister eats one eighth. How much is left? Can you see how much is left? One eighth. And because it's a word problem, we need to write a word answer. There is one eighth of the pizza left. I think we have just enough time to quickly jump across and do our last word problem. This one, having a look. Susan is on holiday in Hermanus. Her dad hires a kayak for nine tenths of an hour. Okay, nine tenths, that's an important number. Nine tenths. She uses it for two thirds of an hour. How much time is left before they have to take the kayak back? Here's our problem. We have nine tenths of an hour. That's how much we're allowed. We've used two thirds. We want to see how much is left. So we've got and we minus what we've used to see what we have left. We know that when, with the denominators being different, we first need to make them the same. Hmm. This one I've made a, a definite grade five level problem. Okay, we are almost at the end of the lesson. So that's okay. It's a very big challenge, this one. Let me actually just change the number a little bit just to make it a grade four level problem. So let's say instead that she used it for half an hour. So dad hired it for nine tenths of an hour. She used it for half an hour. We want to know how much is left. We cannot subtract until our denominators are the same. So let's make them the same. First number stays the same. We didn't change it. Second one, one times five is five. Two times five is 10. We now have the denominators being the same so we can subtract them. 10 at the bottom, nine minus five is four. So we have still got four tenths of an hour until we have to take it back. Right. That was some tricky stuff to finish off our lesson. I hope that you managed to stay with us. Sorry, I accidentally put in a, a tough level problem. I uh, hope it all made sense. Let's jump back and finish off the presentation. All right, that's where we finish off for today. Um, reminder, if you have any questions, grade five at worksheetcloud.com. E Sorry, grade four at worksheetcloud.com. My goodness, somebody is a little bit asleep this morning. And also e to check that you have managed to understand what it is we've, we've done, click on the link above that gives you the homework worksheet. Either you can mark it using the memo that's there as well, or you can wait until next lesson when we will quickly go through it and you can mark it then. Please remember that I've included plus and minus problems there. So make sure that you're doing the right operation. Right, have a fantastic day. 
uh, my fantastic fours. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Goodbye.